What's up and aloha, everyone. It's me, Drew, your host of the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. On today's episode, I am talking to my good friend, Kyle Wheeler. Kyle lost over 100 pounds doing my back to fit journey. You definitely don't want to miss this episode. We talked about uh, how he found me, uh, how he was able to be so successful on this on this program. His transformation photo is by far one of the most popular ones we've ever posted on my social media. Uh, and his his transformation is just mind-blowing so i bring him on to talk about his journey back to fit how he did it with me uh you'll learn a ton from him as well of how he did it and and what he's doing now to maintain that weight loss Uh, before we jump into the episode with him shout out to our show sponsor real good foods real good foods is one of the fastest growing frozen food companies in the u.s everything they make is nutrient dense high in protein low in carbs and made from real food ingredients Instead of using processed flours, everything they make is 100% grain-free and gluten-free, which is how they keep their carbs so low. They make food for every occasion, breakfast sandwiches, poppers, enchiladas, entrees, and pizza. Everything they make is super convenient, which helps when you're trying to eat cleaner but are crunched for time. Everything is very easy to prep, and you can enjoy it within as little as a few minutes. And the best part? Everything is super tasty. You can find their products at Costco, Walmart, Target, Kroger, and in almost every grocery store nationwide. Or you can order online. And just for being a listener of the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast, you can use the code Fit to Fat to Fit for fifteen dollars off a minimum order of fifteen dollars on their website. So whether you're on a keto diet, trying to cut back on your carbs, or just trying to eat healthier, Real Good Foods makes super convenient and tasty options. You can find them at RealGoodFoods.com and at Real Good Foods on all social media. Shout out to our show sponsor, Complete Wellness, which is my brand of supplements. If you haven't gone to Complete Wellness recently, definitely go check it out. We have a lot of new products out there um, that maybe you you weren't aware of before. And if you use the code PODCAST, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, you'll get 20% off your order. So uh, head over there, check out our new whey protein. Uh, You can check out our new electrolytes uh, that we just uh, came out with, sodium, potassium, and magnesium which are essential on the keto diet. People are in love with their peanut butter chocolate whey protein, which is a whey protein isolate. The flavor is on point. It's sweetened with stevia. It's got the perfect macros. You'll definitely want to check that out. And like I said, it's the most popular. And we're also now on Amazon Prime. So Amazon Prime, uh, you can check out all of our products there, you guys. And uh, if you prefer to shop through Amazon, go check it out on Amazon Prime Complete Wellness products. So once again, If you want to go to completewellness.com, use the code podcast for 20% off your order or check us out on Amazon Prime. Really appreciate you guys. Stay tuned for this amazing episode with Kyle Wheeler. All right, Kyle, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Drew. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Thanks so much for jumping on the podcast. I'm excited to have you on and, and share your story with my audience. Uh, where, where where do you live again? I live in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, up northeast. Okay. The Midwest, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. And so before we jump into your story really quickly, tell like I know you did my Back to Fit program. We'll get into all of that. Sure. But how much weight? did you lose doing this program? That is a great question. I know (laughs) at first uh, I was so hesitant to weigh myself Mm -hmm. because I I grew up wrestling all my life, but I was usually heavyweight, 215 or heavyweight or so forth. So um, I, uh, even in high school, I was weighing in around like 240. So um, I knew I was much bigger than high school, but yeah, one night uh, we were at a friend's house. They always had a scale in the bathroom and Kicked off yeah. my shoes one night and just stepped on there. I was like, oh, I know I have my jeans and shirt on and stuff. It'll probably say 250, <laughs> 260. And uh, yeah. it was, it was, I want to say it was close to 308. And I stepped right off. And uh, wow. it was very, very eye opening. I think I almost had an anxiety attack and had to collect myself and go back out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear you, man. That's that's pretty powerful. And that it, it takes experiences like that to kind of really wake us up sometimes. Like sometimes it's a picture, sometimes it's a diagnosis from a doctor, or sometimes it's stepping on the scale like that where we're like, Wow, okay, I had no idea it was this bad. I need to make a change. So so you started at three oh eight and what did you ultimately get down to? Uh I weighed in this morning at about one seventy seven point four, which is 
Wow. Definitely, <laughs> definitely uh, pretty surprising. Um, I know when I had first made uh, the post, my, my before and after, I was around 184 uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's going nice and, and steady now, about uh, two pounds a week or so. Um, Dude, but yeah, it's crazy. It's actually, it's, it's as surprising to me as it is to other people. I think it really takes me seeing the photos for that to set in. Um, I, yeah. I think the best approach for me was to, to treat it almost nonchalant or try not to get too much into my own head about it and just day to day, point A to point B and so forth. That's, that really helped amongst a lot of yeah. other things that you teach. Yeah, that's incredible, man. That's a, and we'll jump into, you know, your whole journey and things like that. But let's kind of start with how you discovered me or how you found me like fit following fit to fat to fit. And how did that begin? Absolutely. So I actually remember, was it 2011 when you had first started fit to fat to fit? Yes. That was yeah. actually, um, so I had actually have kind of done my own fit to fat to fit where, uh, I was probably still floating around 240, around 2010, 2011, and uh, started doing this unsustainable diet of, you know, egg whites, and then three hours later, chicken breast, and then egg whites, and uh, just yeah. cardio, car I had just so much information out there in the fitness industry, and so I, I had gotten down close to 190 uh, around 2011, and I remember I, for motivation, I, I was on YouTube a lot, and I think one night I had actually saw your Dr. Drew interview and um, mm. was absolutely blown away by, uh, you know, your your journey, especially after that six months of uh, typical processed American diet and seeing how you gained almost 80 pounds. I mean, how could you not just be completely enthralled with that story? So that, that was something that, that was very eye opening to me. And, you know, fast forward nine or 10 years, I had ballooned up to my my before picture you know, over 300 pounds and yeah, I had uh, started around December, so I was just looking through YouTube for anything to to get me going, and I had stumbled across at season one, episode one, a fit to fat to fit, and um, that was one of the most powerful episodes of any kind of television I'd ever watched. I cried my eyes out at least four mm -hmm. or five times. I mean, <laughs> just at how I could relate to them, and uh, just seeing that it's possible. Uh, so then I was like, well, who's, who's Drew Manning? And, and I had just did the deep dive of everything fit to fat to fit and your personal YouTube as well. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Episode one, season one of Fit to Fat to Fit with JJ and Ray is a very powerful episode. Oh, we'll put a link to that in the show notes because I think that's a really, yeah, it's it's a different experience than what you normally see on TV, but I'm glad, so glad that you found it motivating. I'm curious to know what what do you think your journey where you you ballooned up to 308 what do you think led you down that path and uh, you know being a wrestler having that discipline you know you know how to discipline yourself i know that because i wrestled too yes. and it's all about discipline uh, what do you think life experiences led you down that path to gain that weight that's a great question it's it's definitely a, a culmination of a lot of things um i would say that you know, of course, growing up, I was born in 1986, so I'll be 35 pretty soon. So, you know, growing up early 90s. And so it was it was the same thing, uh, like you say, in a lot of interviews, you know, typical breakfast, a, a bowl of sugary cereal, a, a glass of juice and so forth. And we I just was always always a big guy, kind of. And that just really set in early uh, that that was what I decided. That's who I am. I'm the big guy. I'm I'm the bigger guy. So you know, I was always offensive yeah. lineman, defensive lineman, and when it came to wrestling heavyweight too, the the thing about discipline with heavyweight was I was kind of a jokester. So you know, most of you guys had to cut weight, and it was tough. But I'm having a, a subway pizza sub before weigh in, and it's because uh, the weight limit's yeah. two eighty five for heavyweight. I'm weighing in at two forty, so. <laughs> I'm still wrestling bigger guys. So it was, it was tough. I always kind of just accepted or I decided that's who I was. And even just growing up that kids can be, you know, mean without trying to, I, I my nickname was lunchbox and all kinds of things that you just, uh, but fast forwarding more to, to adulthood, you know, it, it's so many things like, uh, like your first heartbreak and, stress eating. And um, one thing that I love that you preach was finding the underlying cause of why we stress eat. What is the reason why? And 
I had never even considered that up until less than a year ago. But I think depression, um, just just negative, negative self-talk as well, just mm. in my mind telling myself I'm not worth it. Look at you. You know, you're always going to look this way. It's just it's so easy to get into that. And also just being self-conscious on top of it. I know you can relate a little bit when you were walking around at, you know, 270 and just how people look at you. It just uh, it's it's really tough. And I that yeah. was my whole life uh minus a year or two and <laughs> so it just uh, it was a culmination of a lot of self-doubt um negative self-talk and um just not really believing i could do it honestly uh yeah so uh, amongst you know yeah. a million other excuses <laughs> you can give yourself yeah but it's so interesting and this is why i preach you know how much a transformation is mental and emotional you know you could have the discipline you could have the knowledge you could you know all that stuff but when life gets at you uh it's it's a lot harder than people think it is and so thank you for opening up and talking about that because i think that's what really ultimately most people either they're aware of it or they're not aware of it but it, it is these emotional factors driving these unhealthy habits um you know and then you 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 add those on top of each other day after day week after week month after month year after year and then boom you look back you're like man i'm 40 50 60 plus pounds overweight now how did i get here and you're like man i need to do something about this and so anyways let's kind of talk about um you know with my fit to fat to 40 journey what uh how did you find that or what was motivating about that to you what was different about that to you when you first were like okay i'm gonna do fit to fat to fit with with drew this time in 2020 that is a great question um the fact that you were doing it again of course was extremely exciting because um you know by the time i had discovered it it was a couple years old and also the fact that you know i'm i'm gonna be 35 uh pretty soon so um i i already knew the clock was ticking for myself uh when it came like hormonally when it comes to you know you're starting to battle you know uh lowered levels of testosterone and just it's so exciting and and encouraging to see that now you're 40 years old and now you're back to where you were 10 years prior i'm going to do it again look you know we can do this we're worth it so that's i was so fired up and one thing i really rely on uh, of course was every episode of both seasons of fit to fat to fit but any any motivational videos i can find weight loss videos things like that I'm all for it. And that's what I heavily rely on when I didn't want to work out when I was smelling, you know, cake in the other room, having to run out to the, to the garage. And so that's always very exciting. It's like, can he do it again? Can he really do it? Especially at 40 and um, just watching you go through your own personal struggles because life gets in the way, no matter what we plan. So your unexpected struggles with that as well and watching you still overcome it. And then of course that emotional weight, final weigh in, I watch that probably a few times a week and I, I tear up wow. with you, honestly, because <laughs> one thing that I'm always trying to envision is, you know, that's that being me <laughs> stepping on the scale finally and it being where I, at least as long as I'm healthy, that's great, but kind of wanting to be where I want to look physically as well and, and watching you, you know, with that, that emotional final way in and everything, it's just so, so inspiring. And it's the most wholesome, you know, fitness program out there, honestly. And, um, it, it's the, you know, the fitness industry has so many things wrong and, and that approach to that mental, spiritual, emotional journey, as well as physical and watching you do it at 40, just how could you not want to root for you the whole way? <laughs> Yeah. So going into the back to fit journey, when you joined me on that back to fit journey, what were your kind of uh, fears or did you have fears going into into it? And if so, how did you overcome those fears? Because I think a lot of people get fearful when they start a, a health journey because they've been through it before. They're like, OK, I'll do this weight loss journey. I'll be strict. I'll, I'll you know, eat the egg whites. I'll <laughs> eat the chicken breast, you know. But then, you know, there's this little you know, negative self-talk, like, oh, okay, you're after two months, you'll probably quit. You know, it's going to be too hard for you. You already know this. How did you overcome those? Maybe if you had that, it's that negative self-talk. Absolutely. I did. And I was extremely nervous, to be honest. Um, 
because uh, b- before I had signed up for the back to fit, I, I definitely had had taken uh, a lot of what you did when it came to my first month. Uh, I just focused on nutrition, stretching, trying to do some some uh, some light yoga and stuff. But uh, then I had uh, signed up for a gym membership, and I was still just doing cardio, 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 mainly because yeah. I I knew uh, I knew a lot of workouts and and what we did in the weight room for football and wrestling, but been a long time so when i i'd be going there and i'd be like all right today i'm gonna do you know cut the cardio in half and now i'm gonna start do arms and legs but i suddenly started to realize that um i i don't know proper form there's so many people using the machines i felt awkward i didn't want to you know impose uh i honestly yeah. I didn't know how many reps to do. I didn't know what weights to start at when it came to, you know, resistance training. So I relied so heavily on my, my pull-up bar, push-ups, cardio. But with the keto diet and I had not cheated and so much cardio, I, I think I was dropping weight. You know, it was kind of scary fast. And I, I knew I wanted to start, you know, adding muscle and not just leaning out and losing bone density and so I was yeah. extremely nervous, and um, I actually wasn't even aware uh, at the time about the you know the Fit to Fat to Fit app, and that I could sign up for it. So the second <laughs> the second I saw your link, uh, I had signed up immediately, and I was like, "This is perfect because um, I can start working on my home gym and the modifications that you show. You know, if if I don't have a lat pull down machine, I can use resistance bands, or if I can't." <laughs> If I can't do this, mm-hmm. this is the modification. So that made me instantly feel so, so much more comfortable. I knew right where to go in the gym and it, it helped out so much because going into the gym, you, you know, you got to lift weights and you got to do this and that. But if you don't know the how many sets to do, the weights, where to start, you're worried about looking goofy in front of people. Mm-hmm. All of that is so yeah. challenging and I can see that being a, a big obstacle. Um, so I doing a lot of cardio until I, I luckily found, uh, yeah, the back to fit program. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And so, you know, during your journey, were there any hiccups or any kind of plateaus or anything that, you know, I would guess you would, you, you know, or were you 100% every single day all the time? Or were there times where you're like, okay, I don't know if I could do this? That's a great question. Actually, I was most excited to sign up because I was stuck um, I'll have I'll have to check that. I believe I was stuck at 224 pounds for almost two weeks straight, okay. and I had gotten through that plateau. But then again, at around 212, either 204 or 212. But either way, I, I was stuck again for over two weeks, and I I was trying to go 100 percent just my own way, <laughs> not knowing much and. Uh, I, I was most excited to sign up for back to fit because I knew it'd be new exercises, new workouts, and that was going to help, you know, confuse my body into, to breaking that plateau. So, um, I init- I busted right through my first plateau and then, uh, I know for sure at 204 pounds, I was, I was there for a while too. And, uh, about after the first week, I, I haven't really plateaued much at all since then i was at 184 for a few days but yeah the the actual back to back for more program back to fit sorry yeah, yeah it honestly it got me through those plateaus and also i'm i'm starting to really see body composition change that's still surprising every time i look in the mirror it's i'm i'm just really excited and and feel great yeah i just want everyone yeah. to feel this way um i really <laughs> really do it's just amazing yeah, that, that is amazing. And your transformation photos are amazing. And if you guys haven't seen them yet, everyone listening, uh, you got to go on social media and check them out. And we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Talk to me a little bit about what you thought of the mental and emotional aspects of the program, because I think a lot of people, you know, they go into this thinking, okay, here's my meal plans, here's my workouts, here's my supplements, and I just do that part and then I transform. <laughs> what what for you what was your opinion about the mental and emotional stuff the the making of the bed the meditation the cold showers the gratitude list those things yeah i believe that without that mental spiritual and emotional aspect of it that it's it's going to be really really tough to do um i think that was the biggest reason why when i initially was down to 190 almost well about 10 years ago 
and I had ballooned right back up, it was because you, you either, I had gotten comfortable. I'm like, all right, I look good now. I don't have to do this anymore. But also <laughs> yeah. uh, I wasn't, I wasn't working on any of my past traumas. I wasn't, I was still had that negative thinking. So one thing that, that you had said, I believe in, it was either the complete keto book or, or fit to fat to fit, but, uh, it's, it's better to, to love yourself to health than to hate yourself skinny. And I definitely, definitely know what it's like to hate yourself skinny. So it, it's, it's honestly mandatory in my opinion. And, um, just going back to what you said again, it's, it's at least 80% mental, emotional, and spiritual. And the other 20% is, is, you know, the macros, the physical aspects, because, uh, also the positive self affirmations was something I had never tried before. Uh, the first time I actually did it, I made sure nobody was around and nobody would hear me, uh, close myself in the bathroom. And I just looked myself in the eye. I get a little emotional thinking about it now, but I, I cried my eyes out probably harder than I had cried in two or three years. Just telling myself, I, I love myself. I'm worth it. I can do it. Um, but yeah, I can, I can definitely feel myself getting emotional now even, and it's just that powerful. And, um, if anybody asks me for advice, I always point them to you first, but I definitely don't, or don't skimp on emphasizing that that's the most impactful thing is mentally, spiritually, emotionally, then physically loving yourself, just having a, a brighter outlook on life. It's, it's so important because just, yeah, everyone knows that you have to work out and calorie deficit and this and that, but if it was that easy, then, you know, we wouldn't be facing such a, such a crisis in the United States and more people than ever needing insulin and just this easy access to cheap food everywhere you go. Um, it's, it's really easy for people to fall into that trap. And uh, as you know, that those, those processed foods, those sugars and, especially sleep deprivation. I, I'm actually, uh, my line of work, I, I work specifically with people trying to sleep better. And uh, so I, I just know as well, sleep deprivation on top of that, your hormone imbalance, you're craving these sugars, these carbs, and then you're crashing. It's making you more depressed. It's just such a vicious cycle. So it's that mental, spiritual, emotional aspect is just absolutely mandatory. So as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of the ketogenic diet, mostly because of the mental clarity that my brain feels when I'm in a state of ketosis. And so one of my favorite brands or sweeteners that I like to use on keto is called Lakanto. And I love that their whole concept of their business is discover your chi, which is life energy. And for me, when I'm in a state of ketosis, I feel like I can be a better business owner, a better dad, a better, you know, boyfriend, whatever it is, I feel like I show up better in this world when I take care of my physical health and I take care of my mental performance, which is why I love being in a state of ketosis. So Lakanto, I love their products because they make it so much easier to be able to have those, those foods that you normally couldn't have on keto because they're high in sugar, but with a monk fruit, which is a sugar substitute that doesn't spike blood sugar levels that won't knock you out of ketosis, you can have those comfort foods like cookies now and baked goods and <laughs> they have some really, really good products. All of it sweetened with monk fruit. It's keto friendly, absolutely sugar free, of course, gluten free. It's non glycemic. So it's not going to bump up your blood sugar levels. I've tested, I've even tested this myself and all their sweeteners are zero calorie and they have uh, a bunch of amazing products from blueberry muffins to pumpkin spice muffins uh, to pancake mix to brownie mix to all kinds of cookies uh, that you can bake with their products. Um, one of my favorite things is their droppers. I like to use that in my coffee because um, it sweetens your coffee with zero calories. You can use it when you're fasting as well. Go check out lakanto.com and if you use my code fit to fat to fit, you'll get 20% off your purchase. That's fit number two, fat number two, fit for 20% off. Head over to lakanto, L-A-K-A-N-T-O.com and use my code fit to fat to fit for 20% off. Yeah, man. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's, it's powerful to hear other men talk about the power of positive affirmations because it's something that seems so cheesy and so corny. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, Absolutely. It's not like too much pride. Yeah. Too much pride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, it's really powerful, though. Like you said, you got you got emotional doing it. And so did I when I first did it. You know, it was a really powerful tool for me. So I highly recommend everyone listening. If you haven't tried positive affirmations, 
just do it for 30 days and see what happens, right? It's it's one of those things that, yeah, it might feel uncomfortable at first, but the more you do it, the more you start to believe in those words. And then you start to believe in those words. Those words have an impact on you at the cellular level. It's not just something that feels good. It definitely impacts you. And there is this science to kind of uh, back that up. And so thank Absolutely. you for sharing that. I really, really appreciate that, Kyle. And uh, that's where my hope is that when people – start to do these things uh you know we 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 talk about working out but also working in you know is really important too and that's where it can become a lifestyle change where this is something that becomes a part of you for the rest of your life it can become a lifestyle change if you continue to do the the mental emotional spiritual components of transformation as well as the physical stuff and so um yes thank you for for sharing that um when people see your transformation photos, obviously, man, there's so many questions. It's like <laughs> it's so hard many. to believe. Like, hey, yeah, exactly. Like, like how did or how did you do it? And is this real? Like, is this photoshopped? You know, because yeah. it's so amazing, man. But you have such an amazing transformation. Um, you know, where what are your goals moving forward? Like, what do you want to do now? Because that's the pro- I think the problem that people uh, or have is they get to their goal and then they don't know what to do, right? Yes. So, what <laughs> are your goals moving forward? Yeah, that's a, a great question as well. Um, it, a couple of things I like to mention about the before photos. So it was right after work and um, it's just some uh, some a popular Canadian comedy. I was uh, some show on Netflix anyways. I, it was a comedy show that one of the characters of the show, his whole shtick was he has a, a big belly. And um, anyways, it was called the Cheeseburger Picnic. Long story short, um, they uh, had a meet and greet and then uh, it was, you could take a picture with your belly side by side. So mm-hmm. I think the angle, I, I was, I wasn't sucking in my gut by any means. I was, you know, pushing it out a little, but it, it's it, sadly, it's definitely me. Um, but uh, that was eye opening too, because I think with body dysmorphia, the brain is so interesting. When I was that large looking at myself in the mirror, I had convinced myself it wasn't that bad, but then I'd see a photo of myself and I was like, Oh my goodness. Um, that's, that's really me. <laughs> so I, it, it's quite the transformation for sure. And it, it was, it was a, a lot of baby steps in the meantime, before I had even committed to the lifestyle, I just, and started taking the, the buns off of my fast food burgers or switching a diet. You know, I was trying to trying to inch my way there. But uh, yeah, going to what you were asking uh, with my with my goals, that that is a great question. And that's something that I'm starting to experience now, too, where I would say the quick answer is um, my, my main goal is has always been longevity, being present uh, for my family. And especially I had uh, the birth of my first son uh, last November as well. So um, to longevity, you know, trying to be a hero for for the kiddos uh, and just also I I love that I'm helping inspire people and I always give all credit to you. So I want to help as many people as I can. And uh, I always mention, you know, I'm not a nutritionist or anything. I follow fit to fat to fit, follow him, watch a story, get get on YouTube, check out every episode of fit to fat to fit. But, um, I think that what's really keeping me going is that there's so many people, uh, one guy is just an auditor, uh, out East uh, and had hit me up and, you know, he just had a baby and, um, there's a lot, there's a lot of fathers reaching out to me like, Hey, I, you know, I'm over 300 pounds. I just had a kid and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give them all the advice in the world and, and point them your way. And I think that helps too. So long term goals, um, you know, especially with almost uh, an epidemic of of uh, obesity going on, I would love to work my way to at least trying to become a part time personal trainer. And I'm I'm wow. wanting to uh, sign up and, and become a keto coach through your program as well. And uh, so that's I found that my main passion in life uh, is I've always had such a soft spot for large people being one myself. And um I, I just, nothing makes my heart more full. Uh, nothing gives me more joy than seeing somebody's weight loss transformation. And if I can have any part of that and just sparking their motivation or keeping them going or anything like that, if I can help just anybody, you know, become a better person for their family and inspire others, like that would just make my heart so full. And uh, so I yeah. definitely have aspirations of trying to get, become a personal trainer. Um, at, down the road, I, uh, I'm not sure, you know, my path I'm going to take, but that's, that's definitely one thing I've been 
really focused on and can hopefully come up with a good plan to help a lot of people out uh, that were in my position as well, because, you know, your message of empathy is what really struck with me the most and, and just empathizing with people and showing them, look, I'm, I was this everyday guy. I was one of the laziest people I knew. I played Xbox. I worked eight hours a day and I played Xbox until I couldn't hold my eyes open. I had sleep apnea so bad from the weight that, you know, I was sleep deprived. I couldn't do a thing. So I, I've been there and i um, happy to point people your way, but I'm also happy to help anybody <laughs> that I can. So sorry for the long winded answers, but that's, that's, oh, those are a man. couple of my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, no, it's beautiful. I think that's one of the best things that people can do to pay it forward in a sense, but also keep you motivated and accountable is, you know, to, to pay it forward and, I've seen people become amazing personal trainers or coaches uh, in this industry because of their transformation. And they want, like you said, I want other people to feel this way. And I think if people could feel what this is, what it feels like just for a moment, they would want to put forth effort. You know what I'm saying? They would want to make these changes in their life, but it's, it seems so impossible in their mind that they convince themselves that they're not worthy, that it's too hard. It's going to be impossible. And so you are a great example of that, Kyle. So I really appreciate your uh, willingness to pay it forward and, and, and help other people out. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's that's amazing, man. Um, what would you – let's go back a little bit and, you know, as we close this podcast and think about what would you say to this old version of yourself? Be like During those times where you're, you were down, you maybe you weren't feeling motivated to make a change – What would you say to that old version of yourself or maybe someone listening that is in that rut where they're like, I don't feel worthy. I don't feel like I can do this. Uh, What would you say that would you think would help that old version of yourself through this? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, I I often think about that and it's very, yeah, it's, there's a lot, uh, the, I'm the same person, but the mindset I was in back then, I, it almost felt like, there was nothing anybody could have there was nothing somebody could have said to me that would have changed my mind at least in my own head if that makes any sense but i think that um just stressing that you know we're only here for so long and just take a step back and you do not feel good you wake yourself up snoring every few minutes you're having migraines in the morning is this acceptable why are you just putting up with this is a few things i would say to myself and then uh, i had military parents so it's almost break you down build you back up Mm -hmm. kind of approach but it's like look we i would definitely stress um to myself to seek you know just someone to talk to when it comes to therapy because that's something that's helped me out so much, the mental health aspect. And um, one quote that always stuck with me is, you know, a lot of men often live their lives in quiet desperation. And that definitely holds a lot of water for me because like we were saying earlier, you know, the positive self-affirmations, a lot of people don't want to do it. It's, there's just this image to uphold, but if we just keep I kept bottling up all of that negativity and it was only a matter of time before it exploded. So um, pointing out the health benefits and honestly, just once I started experiencing that mental clarity, that energy again, I have not felt so good in a long time. It was, I was uh, annoying (laughs) my, uh, my uh, fiance Kelly a lot because I'd wake up and just scream like, I feel so good. Like, <laughs> like I just, yeah. I love to get hyped up. And as a big guy, I always try to be uh, kind of goofy. So in my Instagram videos, I, I try to just, you know, have a little bit of humor with it. And, uh, but honestly, I, I think therapy, the mental, emotional, spiritual aspect, I cannot stress that enough. And I know you can't stress it enough either, but if if it was if there's somebody on the fringe getting ready to to try the lifestyle out, that's that's one of the biggest things is is um you know the ten minutes of meditation minimum, guided meditation, positive self affirmations, and and you know just looking for avenues, someone to talk to that that would have helped a lot. And also if I could see <laughs> see what was underneath all of that weight too, if I knew what was waiting for me on the other side. Uh, because as a large person, most of you, a lot of people have a lot of extra muscle under there too. So, um, yeah, just knowing what's waiting for you on the other side, it's possible. You might not think you can do it, but I mean, if I can do it, literally anybody can. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. Well said, Kyle. Thank you so much, man. Where where can people follow you? You know, I'm sure people are going to want to follow you and your journey. Um, you know, where do you want to send people to? Oh, um, I think Instagram would be the best. Um, it's all okay. lowercase. It's just keto underscore with underscore Kai, K-Y. That's a nickname K-Y. a lot of people have had with me. So <laughs> keto with <Yeah>. Kai. <laughs> um, I try so, to have a little bit of humor and uh, just posting specifically my journey, especially uh, with uh, my experience with with your app and just ketogenic yeah. journey in general. And uh, yeah. hopefully I can make a couple people laugh as well along the way. Yeah, man. I think humor is definitely is, is so important. You know, I think we're kind of programmed to be super serious as we become adults, right? Absolutely. Kind of let go of the, the childish ways, I guess. But um, Kyle, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story, man. We'll put a link to the show notes of your transformation, your Instagram, all of that. Um, you guys go follow, go follow Kyle. Um, and uh, really excited to see what, what the future holds for you, Kyle. So thanks so much for coming on, man. It was good chatting with you. Likewise. Thank you so much again, Drew. Okay. I really wish you the best and looking forward to, to what you got in store for us. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, brother. Stay tuned, man. More to come. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to this episode on the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. I really, really appreciate all your support you've shown me throughout all the years. If you love the podcast, then please go subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And also, if you love the podcast, please leave us a review. It definitely helps out with rankings, which means more people listening to this podcast when they see it. And feel free to reach out to me on social media at fit to fat to fit or at fit to fat to fit.com with suggestions or comments or concerns, anything that you guys think I could do to make this podcast better for you. I definitely want to bring the highest quality content to you, the most value, because I know you're investing, you know, 30 to to 50 minutes per day when you listen to the podcast. So I really appreciate all the support. And uh, like I said, go follow me at fit to fat to fit on social media if you want to reach out to me uh, with any comments, questions or concerns. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys back here next week on the fit to fit experience podcast.